Hey everybody, Pastor Brendan Witten here, back again for day six of our 2020 Fast Forward campaign we're doing here at Toronto State Church. Again, as always, huge honor to have you join us for this. Huge honor to be able to spend some time with you via technology. My prayer every day is just that these words are bringing life and they're bringing encouragement to you. And not just because it's my words, but because it's the Word of God. The whole point of this fast and this time has been us rallying together, seeking God regarding His plans and His purpose for us in our generation, the destiny. We want to be people of holy ambition who are giving our lives for the plans and the purposes of God. And so as every day, I've got another verse for you and I want to encourage you. I want to build your faith as you're listening and seeking God. God wants to speak to us during this time. He wants to speak to you during this time about His plans, His purposes, His calling and where He's taking you. And so I want to encourage you just in what the Word of God says regarding that. Today our focus is going to come out of Luke 2.49, and it's a verse, but it's a verse that's also connected to a story. And the verse says, and he said to them, and this was Jesus talking, why are you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Or another translation said, do you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now, it's really important we get the context of this verse and what Jesus is saying. At this time, Jesus is 12 years old. He is with his parents, Mary and Joseph. By this point, they have other children. And they go to Jerusalem, as they do every year, to worship at the time of feast. So they go, they do the worship, they do what they do, and then they head home. One problem, they forget Jesus. Now, I don't know if they just totally forgot about Jesus or Jesus kind of snuck away. The Bible says that they got going and they thought for a while that he was with his cousins or he was with others who were traveling. I guess, you know, it's like just a big communal kind of village together where they're traveling. So they thought he was hanging out with his friends and his cousins, but all of a sudden they realized Jesus is not here. And can you imagine the panic that Mary and Joseph must have felt? I mean, thankfully, I have never lost one of my children like that. But I remember there was a time where my daughter and we were, at, where were we? I think we were at our ballet class and we were waiting in the lobby and she had kind of gone to sit with a friend and next thing I looked up and I didn't know where she was. And I remember even for that 30 seconds where I was trying to figure out where she was, it wasn't even rational, it was a secure area, it was just parents with ballet kids, but I remember this panic that started to come up inside of me because I'm like, where's my daughter? And I'm kind of looking here, I'm going downstairs, I remember the thoughts of my wife is going to kill me, what happened to Shiloh, you know, all this stuff kind of got And then suddenly I look and I see Shiloh. And she was sitting like 10 feet from where I was sitting with her friend on the iPad with the friend's mother. And I breathe like this huge sigh of relief because I found her. So anyways, I have a little bit of context on Mary and Joseph, except it wasn't 30 seconds. We're talking like three days. And so they go back, they search all through Jerusalem. And the Bible says they finally go to the temple and they find him there in the temple. And you can imagine, you know, one of those ones where you want to like, and parents, I think you understand this. It's like you're so relieved and you're so angry at the same time. Like you're so I found you. I'm so mad at you. Why did you run off? You freaked me out. You know, like it's probably so who knows exactly how it was. But Jesus looked at him. He said, why were you looking for me? It was a 12 year old Jesus. Did you not know I'd be about my father's house or my father's business? And I want to focus on this phrase about being about our father and being about our father's business. Because, you know, when we talk about purpose and calling, we talk about holy ambition, really that's what it's all about. It's not a holy ambition to be about ourselves, to be about our business. That's what happens in the world. But it's being people who say, I want to be about my father, and I want to be about my father's business. I want to be about what he's all about. You know, when we're immature, you know, when it, with a child or a baby, all they think about is themselves. But one of the hallmarks of maturity is you start to think about others. You know, one of the hallmarks of maturity in a child is when they're no longer just thinking about themselves and what they want, what's easy for them, but they start to think about their mom. They start to think about their dad. And there's a whole cycle of life that when we're young, and it's part of it's natural, when we're young, we think all about ourselves. As we mature, we begin to think about others. Then we get married, we have children, and all of a sudden it flips. We're all of a sudden now our life becomes very much about others. And we have this child now who doesn't think a lot about us, but our life becomes all about them. But then as they mature and as we mature in God's cycle, they start to care for us. And then near the ending of our lives, the Bible actually says it's very right and just that children actually care for their parents. And so now parents become the ones who are receiving the care. And so there's this whole progression of maturity that God has for us. Well, it's the same way in the spirit. When we're spiritually immature, so often we're just thinking about ourselves. We're not thinking about our father. We're not thinking about our father's business. See, holy ambition walking in purpose and destiny and calling, is when we really start saying, God, what's your heart in this? You know, when was the last time you woke up and prayed and didn't just ask for something yourself, but said, God, what can I do for you today? 
Lord, how can I serve you today? What can I do for your purposes today? See, that's part of the journey of maturity. That's part of the journey of what God has called us to. And I want to encourage you as we go on this journey of holy ambition, of, of this divine invitation, it's about having this heart like Jesus had. We say, I am about my Father, and I'm about my Father's business. And as part of what during this fast, I encourage you to seek God because He wants to talk to you about His heart. He wants you to see things more from his perspective. And he wants to involve you in what he is doing. The creator of the universe says, will you work with me and partner with me in this great work that I am doing? And so my encouragement for you, my prayer for you and for me, is that we will say yes. Amen? And so again, it's been an honor to be with you today. I will see you again tomorrow. We're going after this holy ambition. We're going after the purposes of God our generation. Listen, God wants to speak to you today. Believe it and receive it.